In this video, we're going to talk through the macro drivers of crypto and Bitcoin adoption. If you're serious about financial markets, this will be a video not to miss. You'll find that Bitcoin has not only had superior returns across many, many years, it's outperforming many conventional asset classes by orders of magnitude. We are very early at the current time. And the hard stance of regulatory agencies is beginning to loosen. There are many reasons to be optimistic about the crypto market. We are entering a digital currency world, where the banks are going to use central bank digital currencies. We'll talk about how money is actually created, and it's a thing that a lot of people don't know. And it's why crypto is absolutely inevitable. Let's run the numbers. The future is unavoidable, but you profiting from it is optional. Crypto is unavoidable, but few people know why. I'm going to explain some of those reasons. From the macroeconomic perspective, when the supply chains broke due to C19, there was massive stimulus, massive printing of government funds. This led to global inflation. Banking collapses soon followed because the yields got out of whack with each other. But the biggest driver driving all of these macroeconomic events was the fiat Ponzi system. Banks work on a thing called fractional reserve banking. For example, if you were to deposit $1,000 into your bank, the bank would keep a percentage of that in reserves and loan out the rest. The concept is the banking system requires a closed system. The bank is simply moving one money from your account to another person's account in another bank. Hence, that $900 loan from the first bank would get loaned out to somebody else. Let's assume they're with a different bank. They would go and deposit that money in the bank. The bank would keep a reserve and look at what's happening. They're loaning out again and again and again. You can see just after the first cycle, $1,000 of real money in air quotes. And the bank has taken $100 of that, but now there's $1,900. The bank created money out of thin air. This is very well known to people inside the banking and finance industry. But on the second leg, look at this. The money system has gone up to $2,700 and 10, and the bank has $190 inside the banking system. By the third leg, that $1,000 has grown to $3,439. And so it goes on and on and on. Please let me know in the comments, what are your thoughts on the fractional reserve banking system that exists globally? When the banking collapses occurred, people wanted their money back and they couldn't get it and they didn't know why. It's because it was created through the fractional reserve system and that means it never existed in the first place. How are governments focusing on this big problem? The Ponzi scheme is starting to collapse. That's simple. They'll just go digital through central bank digital currencies. But surely governments are not doing this. Hang on a second. What's this? Bank of Korea. The Bank of Korea governors sees a central bank digital currency introduction as a case for urgency. Because these pesky things called stable coins, their widespread usage and frequent instability, not really, could reduce the effectiveness, here we go, of central bank monetary policies. That is the key. When we look at central bank digital currency status all around the world, we can see that some countries are in proof of concept. Others are in a pilot. Some have launched. Others have been cancelled, but not many. And some are in research. But literally every single country on the planet is getting involved with CBDCs. That simply means digital dollars. <laughs> Please let me know in the comments, what do you think about CBDCs? Are they evil or just a good development? At the same time, the government agencies inside different countries have been cracking down on crypto. The most notorious is the SEC, the Securities Exchange Commission. 
Simply, what happened here, the big guys inside the existing financial industry wanted to get in before the public did. The countdown for a Bitcoin ETF decision is approaching a critical deadline, and the SEC is poised to approve. There are a lot of physically backed Bitcoin ETFs on the drawing board for approval by the SEC. It's widely expected that there's a 90% probability of approval of all of them except for Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust by January 10th. With the big institutions such as BlackRock, Fidelity and others behind Bitcoin's adoption, we expect that Bitcoin will be adopted momentarily. That is, early next year. Bitcoin adoption is definitely hotting up all around the world. Financial advisors are recommending to their customers to get into Bitcoin and to into crypto. Bitcoin as seen as digital gold. When we look at the performance of Bitcoin versus gold, we can see Bitcoin is outperforming gold by a wide margin. And if we look at gold's comparative basis to Bitcoin and the S&P 500, there's no asset class better than Bitcoin. Bitcoin is deemed to be a slow mover inside the crypto market. Be, be aware, the alts can get very volatile and not all of them are going to go up. Global inflation is a very big problem. Inflation isn't actually under control in most countries. You can see that inflation has been run away from 2019 to 2023. Inflation makes crypto attractive, especially Bitcoin. This week, a lot of central banks are making their rate decisions. A primary one is Japan. Japan's interest rates have hovered around zero for 25 years. You can see that the Federal Reserve, that pink line, and the ECB, the European Central Bank, they've both been raising rates very, very quickly. Australia has been tightening at a slower pace Globally, inflation is starting to come down, which is very welcome news. We're now talking about soft landings as far as recessions go. One thing that we see, with global inflation breaking out, Bitcoin is regarded as a store of value. Many high inflation countries have actually adopted Bitcoin to preserve purchasing power. Another thing to bear in mind, the halving is coming up. Bitcoin is deflationary. It has a fixed supply, and the supply hitting the market every approximately four years gets halved per time period. This is called the halving, and it's around 121 days away, April 17th, 2024. After the halving, we see Bitcoin and the entire crypto market just going exponential. You are early. Hey, you're 121 days early. Please let me know in the comments, what do you think about the Bitcoin halving? Do you think that it will increase Bitcoin's price or do you have some other ideas? Out of the 21 million Bitcoin that will ever be produced, ETFs hold about 3.9% of that supply. That's really tiny. Countries hold about 2.152% of the supply. Public companies a little over 1.2% private companies around 2%, and Bitcoin mining companies just literally nothing, 0.179%. But that's not worth a small sum. All combined, there's 1.962 million Bitcoin in the hands of ETFs, countries, public and private companies, and Bitcoin mining companies, at a value of $82.3 billion. When the US gives the green light to ETFs, Bitcoin spot ETFs, those spot ETF funds have to buy physically backed Bitcoin. That means they have to buy Bitcoin. This will further reduce the supply available on the market. Of course, price will go up. You'd be tempted to say, oh, you missed the bottom. But I can tell you one thing. If you were at the bottom, you, the probability that you bought it is very, very low. Why is that? Because you would think it go, could go cheaper. This is why trading is so valuable. Trading in and out teaches you a lot about timing. When we look at the 200 week moving average heat map, we can see right around now, we're not really overbought or oversold. We're just starting to get going. Literally, we're just starting. 
Just be aware, institutions don't like paying top dollar for anything. They want to see their investment going into the financial press and improving by orders of percentages. That means the institutions are likely to push the price down before they push it up. The future is unavoidable, but your profit is optional. If you're too scared to get in and buy, you won't be buying. Many people think that they have to invest rather than trade. Because trading, oh, that's risky. Or is it? Back around the 13th of December, I was saying that I was leaning in to Litecoin. It looked really good because it was coming up against really heavy structural support. These little green arrows are buys. These little red arrows are sells. Bitcoin and crypto is very spiky. It undergoes exponential price action through the ICE process. After that spike occurred, I turned over all my holdings in Litecoin and then I went right back in again. You can notice that if you're trying to turn over a position within 24 hours, the market may not let you. But this is not a problem, just fast forwarding through time. You can see these were the areas where I was buying. What and how do I buy? I buy on red and I sell on green. I buy on red, sell on green, buy on red, sell on green. You'll notice that I'm buying on red on the way down, but I'm also buying on red on the way up. This is done with an understanding of structure that underpins Litecoin. And Litecoin is one of the best structures in the crypto market as far as the charts we've marked up inside the service. Well, what about Solana and other charts? Can you make money on those, buying on red and selling on green? Yes, you can. What about something like Doge? And Doge was coming into heavy, heavy structural resistance. And you notice I stopped buying on red. It's not an automated response that you do. You don't just mindlessly buy on red. It's very important to know the structure. And when I saw the structure starting to hit structural support away from structural resistance, I started to lean in. And you can see I've turned over a couple of positions there. What we focus on is annualized return on investment and those annualized return on investments are very, very powerful. A lot of people say, oh, I'm just going to get into Bitcoin and I won't worry about the rest of the crypto market. I won't think about gold and I won't think about silver and yields and the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ and all of those other things. Ah, I'll just focus on Bitcoin. That is a massive mistake. If you want to time the markets, and it is possible, you'll need to have a broader vision. Many thanks to Art for his very kind comment. The timing brings all the pieces of the puzzle together. And thank you also to TSP for your very kind comment. If you want to get into Bitcoin or indeed any other crypto or any other stock or even commodities or Forex, the timing cheat sheet, which is available free from ctksmethod.org, is incredibly powerful. The thing to remember is Rule 241, which I applied to the Litecoin trade and I also applied it to Doge. Please let me know in the comments, how has timing helped you to buy and sell more effectively? Financial markets are all intercorrelated and interconnected. We need to look at high impact economic data releases, how they impact forex yields and bonds, how they hit commodities and also government policy. That will flow through to stock market appreciation and crypto appreciation or the exact opposite. Please be aware that news is frequently incredibly biased. It also follows the momentum of the market. If the markets are going up, the news will be pretty much positive. If the markets are going down, the news will be pretty much negative. If you make your buy and sell decisions based on the news, you are going to get wrecked. That's why we look at price reality. We don't look at RIP, which is recent indicative price, because doing that will RIP your money. We just simply understand that prices are moving in a way between structural support and structural resistance levels. So all we need to do is know where the structure is. There's an earlier version of this CTKS timing cheat sheet on ctksmethod.org. I'm going to release this version very soon. The timing cheat sheet right at the start will look very complex, but when you get used to it, it's really simple. 
We can see the DXY, the US dollar currency index, starting to consolidate, but its overall trend is negative. The dollar-yen combination, and you know that the Bank of Japan has its meeting coming up, is just consolidating at the moment. It has an overall negative trend and it's got a negative fresh air gap. It could drop precipitously. This will be cause, be because of structure. Structure overrides, and you'll see this time and time again. One thing that we know with the Forex pairs, and we can cross compare that to the Euro. As the DXY strengthens, we would expect weakness in the Euro dollar. Things are a little bit up in the air at the current time. The Aussie dollar is doing really well. It's been blasting above both on its intermediate term and its momentum. And it has a lot of strong structural support underneath it at the current time. This will be perplexing a lot of people. When the dollar goes up, we expect the yields to follow and gold and silver to go backwards. If we're seeing gold and silver starting to improve in terms of value, we would expect the yields to come down. And when the yields come down, that rallies the stock market and it rallies the crypto market. If the DXY and the yields come down, that is even better. This is why we must understand the intercorrelations. This cheat sheet, timing cheat sheet, is pure Bitcoin slash gold. When people get into financial markets, they expect very simplistic relationships. Oh, this goes up and then that goes down and it's always the same. That is the wrong way of thinking. If you think that way, you're going to continuously just be smashed by the market. The market doesn't care about certainty. It cares about your timing. You need to be like a really good tracker. Keep your eye on these. Keep your finger to the pulse of the market. Understand that gold, for example, is coming into very, very strong structural support, even though it's consolidating on a longer term time trend and it has a little bit of weakness in the momentum as it stands at the moment. It still is highly supported. Litecoin was highly supported and that's why I lent into it as a crypto. There's been many cases that we've seen recently. Bitcoin is coming down to its own strong structural support. When it hits structural support, it will bounce and it will bounce substantially. Even though our focus is on the crypto market, we must pay attention to the Forex pairs, the yields, which are basically government bonds. We need to pay attention to commodities. We need to pay attention to the VIX, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ and other major indices. The indices act as a grouping on individual stocks and we know the Magnificent Seven is pretty much running the market at the moment. To be an effective investor and effective trader, you must know structural support and structural resistance levels. If you know those ahead of time, you can figure out if you should be in or out of something. And you may remember a couple of episodes ago, I said I'm getting out of BNB. And that was pretty much around the top of BNB. It's gone down from there ever since. If you understand CTKS resistance and CTKS support, you know where smart money is leaning in and leaning out. For example, I knew where the smart money was going to lean out of Binance Coin, BNB, so I lent out with it. I knew they would be leaning in to Litecoin, so I leaned in with them. When you would look at a chart like this, you would suggest, oh, this could be going anywhere. It is indeed going up, but is it going up or down at the current time? Bitcoin is under a degree of consolidation around price at the moment. It has a bit of a negative slant on it. But if we think about where Bitcoin can go, that's all dependent on structure. Zooming in on Bitcoin, and this is a daily chart. What we need to understand, where are smart money buying and selling? For example, is there so much structural resistance down here or above this particular price, above that 43,000, that is just pushing Bitcoin down? A lot of people who do recent indicative price analysis would concur. I concur. There's so much resistance here. It's being pushed down. Ah, but we can't do that. We need to mark up all of price history over 5,100 days worth. 
we can see that there is no resistance there, so to speak. The resistance is up from 43,850 as well as 43,950. They are the resistance levels. And when we look down, we can see there's increasing amounts of structural support playing out. A lot of people think that there's only one level of support or one level of resistance. This is not the case and it never was. These levels are very special. These dotted lines are called SLs or Stanfield levels. They are drawn through the CTKS method, which is a standards-based methodology of marking up all of price history. What we can see, there are a lot of areas of structural support. When we see this, we get really happy as professionals because that's what we want to see. We don't want to be up here when price is like this and has light support. We want to be down here buying when it's got strong support. The buying and selling that I showed you before, and that literally is a screenshot from trades in the past 24 hours. Those trades are done with a knowledge of this CTKS structure. Without this structure, I would simply not know where smart money is leaning out and leaning in. And if I don't know, I'm guessing. If I'm guessing, I'm going to lose because I'll be gambling. I do not gamble. Many people are attracted to the crypto market with its promise of easy money and guaranteed returns. Nothing could be further from the truth. No financial market is easy. Just like everything in life, you need to know what you're doing. People enter the crypto market and the financial markets, the stock market, the forex market, the commodities market inside zone one. That's where they feel entitled to make whatever they want to make. After all, they turned up. It was hard to earn that money, so they should get whatever they want. And of course, it should be at 0% loss and lots of X's in return. But they want to go after the gambling, the 100 to 1 shots, without ever realizing that a 100 to 1 shot has a very low probability of actually playing out. And then when it doesn't work out, people get into conflict and blame and jealousy and anger and all sorts of things. These are the low knowledge zones, zone one and zone two. If you're addicted to certainty, you can be assured that you're inside zone one and zone two. Certainty will lead to terror. What you need to get addicted to are probabilities and rules. If you know how to do your timing, you're already ahead of 99% of other people. If you're committed to learning, if you understand the price can go up, can go down, or can go sideways in a 24-hour period, then you're already entering zone three. And if you understand that life is not about what you get, it's about who you become, you're entering zone four. These four zones are really important to understand. People inside zone one and zone two are not just angry at themselves, they're angry at everybody else because they simply have low levels of knowledge. We all start in those zones when we get into anything new. I'm applying this to financial markets, but I could apply it to any sport. I could apply it to any job. Anything, it's always the same. These four zones dominate your progression from ignorance into wisdom. The key inside financial markets is don't be ignorant because if we're inside zone one and zone two, where we're buying into the myth that everything is just guaranteed, you can't make any loss, go for the hundred to one shot and it always turns out. It doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure out that's rubbish, that's not going to happen. But yet, some magical reason, people think that it will. You must have knowledge, and it's incredibly important to have humility. The markets can be very good to you, but they can also be very bad to you. If they're being bad, it's an opportunity to learn something. Professionals always convert their pain into rules. And they're not rough to themselves, they're kind to themselves because they're not focused on beating themselves up. They're focused on beating the ignorance out of themselves through learning. Having respect for yourself and being able to forgive yourself is incredibly important. You will make losses. Life will not turn out the way that you want it to. And when it doesn't, that's life saying, hey, you've got something to learn here. Life is not being unkind to you, it's guiding you. Financial markets tend to attract the best and the brightest. 
But one thing to always bear in mind, if you're living without inner peace and outer peace, that is, if you're living inside perpetual conflict, inside zone one and zone two, you have a miserable life. Getting lots of money will not make it better. It will just magnify what you bring into the world. Therefore, our focus as a community is to find happiness and satisfaction along the path, the journey, which is life. Life is a journey. It is not a destination. And as soon as you reach the destination, you don't want to. You want to turn back. Following the components of positive excellence and the more of these little green words that you can tick, that you can put a tick next to, the happier your life will be. Not just that, but the more sustainable your life will be and the happier people around you will be with you and the happier you will be with them as well. Please let me know in the comments how helpful do you think it is to understand positive excellence and those four zones. And please let me know, would you like more or less of this kind of content? I'm here to help, but we can't help if we don't know. Success in any endeavor is directly proportional to maturity. When people are mature, they've moved in to zone three and zone four. They understand the rules of the game. They are experienced. You're here for a reason. You found the right community. And we have one of the best communities on YouTube. If you find that you're thinking from a position of zone one and zone two, which is either I'm entitled to this, I've turned up, give it to me. Or I'm really angry that I didn't get what I wanted, which is zone two. Those attitudes will make you poor. Instead of thinking from a scarcity perspective, think from an abundance perspective. Know that the universe wants you to succeed. Every day, show kindness, integrity, and gratitude, knowing that opportunities and life reset daily. Know that you are worthy. You go slow to go fast. Just start small and scale. Life pullbacks will give you the strength for the next life rally. When things don't go your way, just say, I am dedicated and committed. I win or learn and never blame. Have a great day or night ahead, my friends, and Kate and I look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow. Bye for now.